Hello my friends, it's Jane, Eddie Wessel. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing good. God bless you guys. I'm gonna try to lower this a little bit so you, I feel closer to you there, that's better. A little bit more. Okay, thank you Father. Let's get anointed in oil. A lot going on, I am telling you, the world, my world is just shaking. Thank you. My world is just moving. God is just moving everything around me. And uh, he's just rearranging everything. I'm like, okay, Dad, I'm ready. I'm ready, Dad. Go for it. And, you know, for months the Lord's been saying, prepare, prepare, prepare. And I have to say, Lord, what am I preparing for? And then I don't realize what I'm preparing for. And then I go, okay, Lord, prepare me. Holy Spirit, prepare me. And the Holy Spirit starts preparing me and tells me, do this, do that, do that, mop your house, you know, all sorts of stuff. Right now, he wants me to wash my cabinets. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, you want me to wash my cabinets? There's just always a message in it. Hi, Hannah. Uh, so this morning has been an intense time of uh, rebuilding lives and bringing reconciliation to family members. And it's just promises that God's made and like last year. And years ago, too. And he's doing it. And I'm just sitting here going, whoa, I could have never thought of that, God. And, you know, and one thing I see is that God um, creates win-win situations for everybody. He doesn't go, okay, you get blessed and you don't. It, well, he wants to bless everyone. But if we're not walking in obedience, you know, um, then we may not have as much blessing or... If when we repent, we definitely have the grace of mercy of God. So anyways, I don't have that all that figured out. All I know is that I just want to be obedient and I want to do the right thing. So Lord, I just pray right now for us in Jesus' name for your word to come to pass. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of our unrighteousness through Jesus Christ. And I pray for your grace and your mercy and your glory to fall upon us today in Jesus' name. I asked the Lord what he wanted to talk, me to talk about today, and I know we've been hitting up on uh, the redeeming, loving redeemer, which is one of the sections of the Lady Jesus Handbook. And um, we started that yesterday, I think. And I want, you know, one of the things that I want to talk to you about is the scripture God gave me um, today, and it's from Zeph Zephaniah chapter 3, and I feel this prophetically. And it says, gather yourselves together. Yes, gather yourselves, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued. For the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. This morning as we were driving, as I was driving, the Lord kept saying, humble, humble, humble. And I was like, Lord, I, and he kept saying, bow, bow, like, you know, just uh, submit to the will of the Father. And he kept saying that this morning and he kept saying, humble yourself, submit to the will, submit to the will of the Father, submit to the will of the Father. And I'm like, okay, Lord, okay, whatever that is, I submit to the will of the Father and I choose to humble myself. And a lot of times, you know, I don't know what it is exactly he's telling me, but I could see that he's telling me to humble myself and do the will of the Father. And I have to go, okay, I surrender, I submit, I humble myself, I bind all pride, and I choose to honor you and do the will of the Father. And I, I agree, Lord, to your perfect plan. And a lot of times, I don't know what his perfect plan is, but I just have to agree. And because I don't want to miss out on God's best for anybody. God's perfect plan is good. It is a good plan. It's a plan that brings peace. And it is a plan that flows like a peaceful river in our lives. And God wants us to be in his perfect plan, which is, a, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 plan. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And if God is telling you something, even if it's to give to somebody else, it is because he wants to bless you in that process. He wants to bring peace into your life in that process. And sometimes giving to someone else will bring peace into your life. 
It will bring peace into your life and it will allow you to have a peaceful future. God isn't just about how much you can hoard in your closet or how much property you can have or what you have in your bank account. Sometimes cracking a little bit of it out and giving it away will bring you more peace than having all of it in your bank account. Isn't that awesome? God is so good. He is so good. And he is doing a path of redemption and restoration for us. You know, going back to, uh, okay, so let me address this for a minute. The Holy Spirit was pointing to the scripture right now. So the, the answer for judgment, okay, the answer for judgment, according to the scripture, this is talking about bringing judgment on the nation. And the answer to the judgment is in verse three. It says, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which means meekness is humility. You who have upheld his justice, those who have stood up for the ways of the Lord, seek righteousness. So seek to be righteous, seek to be humble, um, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. So when judgment comes, it will pass over the Lord's people. It's kind of like uh, when the Israelites were in Egypt and they were escaping and God was bringing the judgment of death to the firstborn, that the Lord was saying, hey, Put the blood of the lamb over the mantle of your doorpost, uh, O Israelites, my people, my people. I know you've sinned. You know, I know you're not perfect, but you're my people. And I've made provision for you. And the provision I have made for you is the blood of the lamb. The provision I have made for your sins, my people, is the blood of the lamb. And I need you to put the blood of the lamb over your doorposts, over your mantle of your door, so that when the spirit of death comes through this land, land to, to take the lives of the people that are in rebellion against God, it will pass over you. The spirit of death, the spirit of judgment will recognize that you are covered under the blood of the lamb. This is the message of the Passover. This is the message of the Passover. These people went and, and got their lamb's blood and then they put it over the mantle of their door, doorposts, over the doors and on the sides of the doors and they stayed inside the house and they were having lamb supper they were having lamb supper marriage supper of lamb <laughs> not of the lamb and they were inside their houses the israelites god's people god's chosen when it were inside their home in safety covered in the blood of, of jesus christ covered in the blood of the lamb while the spirit of destruction roamed in the street to kill the lord's enemies he, i just want you to understand the significance of this that when there is judgment and judgment is prophesied over a nation that those who are under the covering of the blood of jesus Jesus Christ get a pass they get a pass the judgment passes over us because Christ the lamb that was sacrificed for our sins paid the price thank you Lord thank you Lord praise you father thank you father thank you father thank you father The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is gentle. He is so bountiful. He is a good God. And he wants to pass a judgment over us. And he has made a way in Jesus Christ. This is our loving Redeemer. Our loving Redeemer is that Lamb. Our loving Redeemer is that Lamb who laid his life down so that his blood may be posted over our lives, on our forehead, that when the judgment comes, it will pass right by us. You know, it says in the book of Revelations, I believe it's chapter 4, that in the last days that there will be this, this judgment released upon the nations. And it says... Um, can it says, Lord, show me where that scripture is. I think it's chapter seven. Mm. 
I'm sorry, but there is a point where it says that the, the judgment is being released and the angels are instructed to go and put uh, anointing oil on the head of all of the people of God. And as the, it's 144,000. You guys know where that scripture is. I'll try to post it later. It could be, oh yeah, it's seven. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, so basically it says, uh, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Um, and so there were 144,000 of all the tribes of children of Israel were sealed. There was a seal that was placed on the servants of God. And this is referring to the Israelites. This is not referring to the church. It's referring to the people of Israel. And there's 144,000 that a seal was placed on their, on their head. And before the tribulation came, this seal was covered on their head so that when the enemy... Uh, when the tribulates, not the enemy, when God's trib judgment came, that it was not going to affect God's people. God always sets apart his remnant for himself, and he always covers us under his hand. This is God's way of protection and provision for his people. God's provision is God's covering. God's covering is our protection. And so, you know, sometimes some of us want to step out here and I know, you know, we want to step out here. And when we're out here, we're not under the protection of God. And God's saying, I need you here. I need you here. Repentance and humility is always the way of salvation. It's always the way of salvation. If anything bad goes on in my life, the first thing I have to do is say, God, what did I do wrong? Where did I sin? Where did I sin? Because I know I'm blessed. I mean, I have so many times the Lord says to me, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. And I have to be careful what I speak over my life because I am blessed. And so a lot of times if something wrong happens, I have to say, Father, where did I sin? And my prayer is always create in me a clean heart, O oh God, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy presence from, uh, from me. Uh, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Oh, take not thy spirit from me. And so my whole point is that I always look and examine, do a self-examination when something goes wrong and says, Father, where have I been wrong? And I like to bring myself before the Lord and lay myself on the altar and allow God to do a close thorough ins inspection of me, of my heart, because he examines the heart, the attitudes of my heart. And if he sees a way in me that is displeasing to him, I say, Father, remove it. I need to be surrendered and submitted and allow you to work in and through me. This is not Jane's plan. This is God's plan. This is not my life. This is your life that I live for you. It is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so we constantly come and surrender ourselves to do the will of the Father and allow him to manifest his glory in us through the power of his Holy Spirit as we are covered on the blood under the blood of the lamb. And if I'm ever like this, I get hit. I get hit. This is why I've got, we have prayer warriors praying day and night. I remember before I went around the nation, the Lord said, they're going to send out their giants. And I said, Lord, what do I do? As I was going to intercede and pray for the nation. And the Lord said, they're sending to prepare, getting ready to prepare to send their giants. And I said, what, uh, what should I do, Lord? He said, gather your stones. And I said, who are my stones? And he said, they're your prayer warriors. So I called my sister and she got a team of prayer warriors that, that have been praying for the last year. It'll be June 16th of this year will be one year that they've been praying minimum two day, two times a day, if not three, almost, it's, it's almost like I'd say about three hours a day. We're in intercessory prayer. And, uh, so I just want you to know that there is just this deep, deep work that God does. And, and when I am outside of that covering, covering of the blood of the lamb, I get hit and that's true for every single one of us. So I have to say, father, where am I outside of that covering? And I have to come back under the covering. I don't know if any of you saw when I was praying for the Supreme court last summer and I was uh, at the Supreme court and I put the Bible over the Supreme court. I put it over the white house and, um, and over Congress. And the whole point was that, you know, you know, the laws of our land, if they reflect the ways of God and honor God, if they're under the covering of God, our land will be blessed. Our nation will be blessed. But when we step outside of that covering, our nation will not be blessed. Our people will not be blessed if we are not under the covering of God. You know, when God had me go to the four corners of, the, of our nation last year, and God had me post angels at every four corner, because God wants to be our protector, he is our shield. You know, there's lighthouses in all four corners of our nation, and they're absolutely gorgeous. 
And I want you to know, you know, when I went to these lighthouses, we were posting the angels of the Lord at these lighthouses. It's like God is our is our uh, lighthouse in these corners. And so the Lord is saying, you know, when I got this scripture, I just think, Lord, Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And it's just basically God is ready to bring judgment on the nations and on our nation. And it, we as a people need to humble ourselves and come under the covering of the blood, covering of the blood, you know, of the blood of the lamb so that we are protected from judgment. And that's what it says. Humble yourself, repent of your sins, and God will have mercy on us. He is our loving redeemer. He is here to have mercy on us. He is here to have grace on us. He is here to show us his favor, his favor his favor. You know, I just think of all of the times I've operated in the favor of the Lord, the favor of the Lord. God has always blessed the United States of America with his favor. From the dawn of history, we've had his favor. But when we walk away from God, we walk away from the favor of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God, the prosperity of God, the protection of God. I think of all of these school shootings that have been happening and my heart is grieved for our children. But I just think, oh, Father, I just plead the blood of Jesus over my words, anoint my lips for this because it's such a sensitive subject. But when you look at our schools and we've taken prayer out of school, we've taken Bible out of school, we've taken 10 commandments out of school and now we're talking about bringing in um you know um curriculum that doesn't support biblical values and we'll and we want god to protect us in our schools we have created a vacuum when we remove prayer and bible out of school we created an empty vacuum like a black hole that is sucking in everything that is possible and available around and it is bringing violence upon our children when will we learn to be wise and be and stop our ignorance when will we stop being so prideful thinking it is our way and our wisdom and our science that's making it happen and honor the ways of the lord you know and um it says here, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and on the earth. You know, I just think of going back to Zeph Zephaniah chapter 1 through 3. We're seeing this attack being hit on our children. This attack on our children. But you know, the promise of God for the people of God is from Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall, shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And all also on my maids, men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And God is not only going to do a thorough house cleaning, I'm telling you prophetically, we're going through a house cleaning and all of the violence that's upon our children is a consequence of our stupid behavior, of kicking God out of school and allowing violence in our schools. And people think it's about gun control. It's not about gun control. Because you can have guns and not have violence. Lord, have mercy on our children. Lord, forgive the father, the parent generation. Forgive the fatherless generation. Forgive the fathers, God. Forgive the mothers, God. Forgive our um, lawmakers, God, who've been so ignorant to bring in violence into our into our schools, God. To bring out, take out the Bible, God. The judges that judges that took out the Bible and the Ten Commandments out of our school have allowed judgment to walk into our school, Father God, into our schools and upon our children. And Lord, I pray you protect our children. God, I pray you rescue our children from the generation before the 60s and the 70s, liberal generation that removed biblical understanding from our schools, God, So and said that there are no values, there is no right and wrong. It's okay to bring a gun into school and shoot 10 kids. It's not. It's not okay. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. But we have removed those Ten Commandments from our walls. And we've said, you can all live according to your own law. Father, forgive our nation, God. I'm going to go back to Zephaniah that God gave me today. Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Not Zechariah, but Zephaniah, which is... Um, um, I'll see. I like that. Return to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I will declare that I will restore double to you. I receive that, Lord. Thank you. Zechariah chapter 
9 verse 12 thank you lord i know that's a word for me because there's some things god's asking me of laying down laying down my life for others and he's saying he's going to give me double restoration thank you lord it's just a lot of times when obedience is painful you know because you're giving away things that belong to you you're giving a um you're uh, interested in other people's well-being uh, and not just your own and so here we go gather yourselves together yes gather gather together oh undesirable nation before the decree is issued see god is asking us to gather together as a nation and he's saying um, there's a decree that's going to be issued and or or the day passes like chaff before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. I'm just telling you there is just there's this judgment on our nation and it's not because of what Trump's doing. Trump's actually reversing it. He's having a heart of repentance towards some of the laws we've been killing babies, we've been allowing gay marriage, we've just been like promoting laws and and you know, telling children they can pick their own gender. I mean things that violate God's heart and God's way and saying that people publicly cannot speak this or fa on Facebook or whatever and we can't allow that to happen that is that is not God's laws that is not God's ways God loves us and the way that God has for us is the right way it's a path of righteousness so that we could prosper in our lives father forgive us and so we need to humble ourselves fast and pray and seek his face and he will relent from his judgment he is a merciful God and he will give us a Second chance but he is saying judgment's coming and we need to repent okay i love you guys god bless you this is jane eddie wessel checking out and i'll see you guys tomorrow 12 30 ish i've got so much going on in my life right now getting the house ready for sale looking for property around the country to move forward in ministry so i've been doing a lot of that today i love you guys god bless you this is jane eddie wessel lady jesus checking out bye